How long have you been personnel manager of the Drew Transportation Company? Thirteen years, MJ. Three with you and ten years before that with your father. Rest his soul. Did you rise when he entered? No, MJ. Oh, I'm sorry, MJ. I, I, I forgot it. Hereafter, confine your setting up exercises to your home. Now, MJ. Now, MJ. Which means you've done nothing about this scurrilous attack. There's nothing libelous in those opening chapters. Though John Drew entered this earth as naked as a chihuahua pup, he departed it in a silken shroud, much to the chagrin of a senatorial investigating committee that was showing a vulgar curiosity in his affairs. Something wrong with your teeth? No, no, MJ. No, the laws of libel are not very definite. Not definite? The daughter is a chip off the old block, if you can chip granite. What do I have to do? Allow this Michael Holmes to beat my brains out with a baseball bat before the legal department can sue him for libel? And you? I told you I wanted this man Holmes in my office within 24 hours. Well, every one of our spotters has been told. Why do I pay you 10,000 a year? I ought to send you back to the police force. Will you stop that clucking? A prominent figure like yourself, MJ, should learn to disregard this type of... Do you think I care for myself? Why do you think the Bolton Steel Corporation lost three lucrative contracts? Because this hack wrote a book about them. And now he's after the transportation business. I will not allow this ferret with a poisonous pen to undermine the confidence of our stockholders. He's getting his information from our employees. Probably the truck drivers. Crane, find out who's been talking to him. And fire them. Yes, MJ. Mahoney, I want this man Holmes found and brought into my office. Yes, MJ. Crane, any employee found talking to him is to be discharged instantly. Marsh? If any other publisher accepts this imbecile's writings, I'm to be notified immediately. That's all. Okay, Mike, you can come out now. It's dark. Pineapples to barbed wire. Don't you guys ever haul mattresses? We don't haul passengers either if we want to haul our jobs. Why don't you, don't you quit and go with a decent outfit? MJ's got a trick, so no other outfit will hire us. Blacklist, than they call it. If I know anything but driving a truck, I'd quit this racket. Not bad. MJ Drew. <laughs> She's getting to be too big for her britches. That's not a nice way to talk about a lady. Lady? Oh, that's no lady. That's a heel. You better stop, Johnny. Looks like a damsel in distress. No, sir. It'll cost me ten bucks if I get caught. And at those prices, somebody else can place a Walter Raleigh. You don't know it, but you're going to be just like your boss. Pretty soon you'll begin to enjoy it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Sister? You've already done it, brother. Number 458, Route 92. A spotter. 
There goes the wife's no shoes. All right, mister. Just throw your weight out of that truck. We're not in competition with the taxi cabs. A day's layoff for carrying a rider. Oh, wait a minute. It wasn't his fault. I'm a stowaway. He didn't know I was in the truck. How? Oh, left your truck unlocked. Heck, will you keep quiet? Keep quiet. That's the trouble with a bunch of you. Why don't you speak up? Shout till somebody hears you. Plotting against the good of the company. You'd better get started before this chump lands on relief. Look, can't we settle this amicably? Offering a bribe. Goodbye. So why does an attractive girl like you have to do this kind of work? Why, Grandma, what big teeth you've got. Look out, MJ Drew. I'm loaded for bear. Hurry! Ten bucks for Susie's shoes. 5.50 for the day's work you lose. If it didn't mean getting docked for being late, I'd stop this bus and kick you right. Yeah, well, you can kick me on your day off. I'll save myself for you. Oh, boy, I'll be glad we get to New York and get a good night's sleep. <laughs> Holy mackerel, what's that? Just to keep us drivers from falling asleep. Well, turn it off. You can't. It goes on at 8 o'clock at night and shuts off at 6 in the morning. It's automatic. Who thought up that cute little gadget? You're getting warm. That's one more I owe that frustrated old hen. You'll have to go around the shore road. That's 10 miles out of the way. Listen, fella, M.J. Drew's little sister's getting married, and this road stays closed. Whose little sister? Your boss's, M.J. Drew. Hey, wait a minute, Mike. What for? I'm going to deliver in person the piece of my mind she's got coming to her, and incidentally, collect the 1550 I got coming to me. But I'm late already. You go ahead. I'm going to bring you back M.J. Drew's scalp to hang on your radiator cap. If the old witch isn't bald. Sure. Break my heart. Wipe your shoes on my feelings, but keep the family flag flying in the Fifth Avenue breeze. I'm not going through with it. I'm not going through with it. That's all she keeps saying. I'm not going through with it. She's not going through with it. Well, of course she can't go through with a dress like that. Oh, dear, of course not. Here, darling, put on this beautiful gown. You'll feel better. I don't want to look at it. <laughs> now, don't you start to cry. Stop crying, friends. It's for Miss Vivian. Hello. Oh, Joe. My knees. It's so sweet of you to call, Joe. Oh, but I can't. Well, the house is all decorated and the guests are all assembled. Uh, it wouldn't be nice. They, they all came expecting to see a wedding. Oh, but I do, Joe, I do. But I can't do that. Of course you can't do that. Who's Joe? Joe Krim. He works in a filling station. I had a flat tire. You've got a flat head. That's not true, Margaret. None of the Drews were flat-headed, except Uncle Everest. When did you see this person last? Oh, I haven't seen him for a long time. When? Last night. Well? We parked my car on Riverside Drive and talked. What did you talk about, dear? How to live on a grease monkey's pay, wasn't it? Yes? Hello. This is Joe Krim again. I want to talk to Vivian. Oh, Joe, this is Vivian's sister, Margaret. I'm so sorry, but Vivian's getting married in a few minutes. Yes, well, don't grieve too much. We'll send you all of our flat tire work. You can't get away with this. You're driving her into that marriage. A loveless marriage. She's not in love with that Pettengill guy. She's in love with me. She told me so. She even wrote me. That's how I know. What? Did you write this person letters? Well, only two or three. Mrs. No, I don't fret, lady. I mean it. 
And what's more, if you don't call that wedding off, I'm going to come over there and do it myself. Please do, Joe. There's a detective on each door, every one of them over six feet. I'll tell them to expect you. Oh, Margaret. Come on, I'll help you with your veil. Every time I'd see him, my head would swim and my knees would get weak. Biliousness. Nonsense, Margaret. It's a family characteristic. All the Drew women had it. I know when I first met your father, my niece. Mother, you know you've always suffered with your liver. Vivian, when you and Stephen return from your honeymoon, I'll have Dr. Cassell look at your liver. He's very good on liver, as you know. Oh, darling, I don't mean to seem harsh, but the institution of marriage is no different from any other step you may take. And never take a step unless it's a successful step upward. Intelligent people don't marry for better or worse. They, they marry for better and better. Oh, oh mother. Oh, I did. Now, stop it, both of you. Come with me. Game. What's going on here? What's happening? Um, nothing. Come on, open up. Just a guy trying to crash the gate without an invitation. Come on, open up this gate. Oh, I'm quite all right. Just my liver. Come on, open that door before I break it down. All this noise will disturb my guests. Do something about it. Yes, ma'am. Listen, you, I want to... Anything else you wish, ma'am? Don't call me, ma'am. Sure. I'd much rather call you baby. Your job is to see that nobody gets in here without an invitation. Especially somebody called Joe. You don't happen to be called Joe, do you? No. No, it's mine. But you can call me baby, too. Inside, sir. Aren't you going into the ceremony? No, no, I hate weddings. Would you care for a drink, sir? No, oh, I hate liquor. Napoleon brandy, worth its weight in gold. Napoleon brandy for herself. Uh, drivers get a fine if they even stop for a drink of water. Do you know that? No, sir. I'm just extra help here today, sir. You're lucky. What's a bottle like that worth? Sixty dollars, with a tax. Sixty dollars? <whistles> Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. And about $30 worth? Yes, sir. And that would be about 15. Is that about 50 cents? Let me have a glass. 15.50, that's just what I've got coming to me. Stephen, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife, so long as ye both shall live? I will. Vivian, wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband, so long as ye both shall live? I will. I will. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? He. I, I do. Have I got my fifteen fifty yet? Almost, sir. Keep the change. Mr. 
true. Yes. I better run him in. I hope you'll be very happy. What's your hurry? I'm double parked. I think I know who he is. Yeah? I'm sure you'll be very happy. Thank you. I beg your pardon, but... Uh, what? I know I know who he is. Who is he? A hoodlum called Joe. I'm sorry, but... Uh, <laughs> I beg your pardon, but... Uh, oh, I know you're going to be very happy. Come along, oh, dear. Come on, with us. Yeah. Miss Mark, yeah. Helene. Yes. Helene, see the man kissing Miss Vivian? Yes. Ask him to come to my upstairs sitting room and tell him it's to his own advantage. Yes, Miss Margaret. Darling, well, well, somebody well, wants to see well, us. Excuse me. Will you accompany me upstairs, please? You'll find it to your own advantage. Sure. Don't you think it'd be better if I went ahead and you followed, sir? Oh, sure, sure, sure. We must be discreet. <laughs> would you would you excuse our friend Marsh for a few moments? I promise to retain him in good condition. So I wouldn't mind being mussed up a little, you know. <laughs> How do you mark money? Well, there are many ways of doing it. In-person episode crosses. Oh. You know, like kisses. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Marsh, let's concentrate on this. Oh, I'll try to, dear, but it's awfully hard. My little sister's been writing things to a fortune hunter. Oh, blackmail. Mm-hmm. You get the detective wait outside my sitting room door, and when I call, come in and come in immediately, will you? Yeah. Will you take your orders for Mr. Marsh? I told him I wasn't the bride, but he said I might be a bride someday, and he might not be there, so he was getting in these licks now. Oh, my. He's kissing everybody. Fix your cap. Baby! I asked you here because Why, I... baby, I didn't know you cared. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Is it possible you feel the same way I do? Certainly not. Why should I? I don't even know how you feel. Oh, I feel as if one of those M.J. Drew trucks hit me. One of the big ones. The Drew trucks do not hit anybody. We have the lowest accident rate in the country. I like loyalty in my women. Even if it's loyalty to M.J. Drew, I'm even prepared to like her. After all, the old bag brought us together. The old bag? Let's not even discuss that tired character. Well, will you stop stalking me? Hear it? Do I hear what? Music. The room's filled with it. The only thing the room's filled with is the noise you're making. I feel as if I'd been lost in a desert island and suddenly found an oasis, cool and green like your eyes. Here's your money, and my eyes are blue. All right, it's a blue oasis. Well, there's a thousand dollars here. Yes, and that's all you're going to get. Oh, wait a minute, baby. You're making a mistake. Well, what do you want? What does any man want? A woman of his own. A home. Babies. Marsh! Marsh! Hey! We do not wish to be disturbed. M.J. was hit. Oh, the man's gone crazy. M.J.? Your M.J.? Yes, the, the old bag, that tired character. Come on, you have your money, Joe. Hand over the letters. Oh, no, there must be some mistake. There must be several mistakes. He has $1,000 in marked money. Take it as evidence. Wait a minute, folks. Let me in on the joke. I've got a sense of humor, too. Oh, well, tell the joke to the district attorney. Come on. Remember, no scandal. Take him down the back stairway. Oh, wait a minute, baby. I've got to get used to this. M.J. Drew. Baby! Shut up. The guests will hear you. Oh, they will, will they? Why don't you tell the groom's family you've got an insane uncle? <laughs> They've got a right to know there's insanity in the family. Why do you just... Somebody them? left the radio on. Hide me away up here. <laughs> We're off on our honeymoon. I'll see you in four weeks.
Oh, good morning, MJ. Good morning. Mr. Marsh come in yet? No, MJ. The moment he comes in, tell him I'm going to speak. Mr. Crane is waiting in your office. Thank you. Any report on Michael Holmes? What are these? Loving cups. I picked them myself. They're for you, too. Oh, well, I've nothing against loving, Mr. Crane, but uh, I hardly think you're my type. Oh, no, no. They're for you to choose from yes. for the dance contest. Send Mahoney in. Dance contest? Yes, at the truck driver's annual ball. They sent a committee hoping you'd attend. You see, they've never met the head of the firm. I pay their wages. They don't have to know me socially. Good morning, MJ. What about Michael Holmes? I gave every spotter a lecture on vigilance, put on a few extra men for the emergency, sent out circulars promising that $250 award, contacted every way station, and I... Did you find Michael Holmes? No. And you? Did you find out which drivers have been consorting with Holmes? I'm making an extensive investigation. Do you think you can spare the time? There must be millions of loving cups that you haven't seen yet. Oh, why am I surrounded by such incompetence? Why am I... Yes? There's a man here who says he's Michael Holmes. Who did you say? Michael Holmes. Have him wait. Come on, come on, get these cuspidors out here. We'll help him. Hurry up. Send Mr. Holmes in. Wherever did you get the unmitigated gall to write scurrilously of this company? I can have you prosecuted. <laughs> How did you get out of jail? Your lawyer got me out. My lawyer? Where is he? He was detained at the police station getting the evidence. Your marked money. Well, there must be some mistake. Pardon the interruption, MJ, but there's a man outside who says this is very important. He wants to see you. But he did... Where is he? Outside. Who are you? Joe Crim. Then who are you? I'm still Michael Holmes. What do you mean by masquerading as Joe? What's the matter? Your liver gone bad again? No. No, you... If you wait here, I'll be right back. Look here, Miss Drew, you've ruined my life. I bet so. I'm heartily ashamed of myself. And give those sweet letters back to your sister and tell her I'll never love anybody but her. How oh, sweet, Joe. I'm touched. Hi. Hello, MJ. Dr. Cassell, when you examined me ten days ago, my liver was bad, wasn't it? No. Perfectly healthy, normal liver. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Well, something could have happened to it in the last few days now, couldn't it? Hardly. Are, are you quite sure? I'm quite sure, my dear. Well, I'm not, and I insist you examine me again. Operator, this is MJ. Get me my secretary, please. Hello, Lewis. Lewis, have all department heads report to my office. Yes, and I'll also want um, all financial statements, operating costs, wages, and a list of stockholders. Yes, MJ. Oh, Mr. Marsh, MJ is very anxious to see you. You'd better wait in her office. She'll be right back. Oh, I was afraid of that. What are you doing here? Comes out different every time. Have you seen MJ yet? Just a glimpse. She told me to wait. Why didn't you wait for me at the police station? I told you I had a proposition I wanted to make to you. No, you know, my mother told me never to accept propositions from strangers. Cute? Uh, I presume so. Miss Drew, we wish to make reparation to you for the inconvenience you've been caused, so here's a thousand dollars. Just sign this paper and the money is yours. It's just a matter of form. Uh-huh. So I'm to absolve you of all responsibility for false arrest on blackmail charges for the sum of one dollar and other considerations, right? Yes. No. How much do you want? Well, I don't know. That depends. What's the condition of this company? You know, financially. Not very good, Mr. Holmes. Not very good. 
Here's the statement of the Drew Banks MJ asked for. I'm rather proud of it. Best year we have cut the losses a bit, eh, old man? Capital, capital. Losses? Look, we have a surplus yeah. of a million and a half. Oh, I know, but I can tell you. Oh, uh, naughty, naughty. Uh, You'll never go to heaven. It must have been a mistake in the bookkeeping department, you see. Marsh, that's a dangerous statement to make. That's all right, old boy. Don't you bother your pretty little head about him. I believe you have a million and a half. Thank you, sir. Uh, look, money isn't everything, you know. And that's right. Oh, isn't MJ here? She asked for operating costs and a profit statement on the railroad lines. I hope she's in a good humor because there is no profit. No profit? Wonderful, wonderful. Tell him. Go ahead and tell him. How much do we lose? It's all right. MJ would want you to tell him. A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. That evens up our bank profits. Yeah, that means you only have a million four hundred thousand left. That's hardly enough for me to live on. What do you want? I want MJ's shirt. Oh, well, let's keep this on a gentlemanly level. I happen to be a congenital cad with a hangover to boot, which makes me twice as mean. Once more, this waiting for the great Drew irks me. If she wants to talk business with me, I'll be available at this address. After 9 o'clock tonight. I wonder if I'm rugged enough to get in the Marines. What made you think he was sick? Oh, dizzy spells, sudden weakness in the knees. Perhaps you experienced some sort of emotional shock. Oh, nonsense. I never experienced emotional shocks. Please give me something for oh, it. Of course, of course. Here are some pills that will act as a sedative. Whenever the symptoms occur, you can take a couple. However, too many will result in drowsiness. Consequently, if the troubles occur too often... All right, all right. Thank you, Dr. Cassell. Thank you. Oh, MJ, here's our personnel turnover. Wait, Bring scale. Along. These are the tables and the costs that you asked for, Fine. MJ. Fine. The next time any journalistic jerk tries throwing mud at this company, I hope you'll know enough to deal with them properly. I want all heads of departments to... May I have a glass of water? Oh, yes, MJ. Thank you. Now, now to put the fear of Michael Holmes. All right, gentlemen, we'll show that scandal monger a few facts. He's gone back to uh, to Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Yes, you know it's that place across the bridge, uh, that that way. And you let him go? Why didn't you hold him for me? Do I always? That'll be all, gentlemen. Thank you. Couldn't face me. All right, Marsh. I want you to draw up a brief prosecuting him for, uh, for libel and defamation of character. And any other charges you can think of that would bring redress for that rotten, scurrilous book he's been writing. Now, M.J. Lecky, you pay me 50000 a year for my legal advice. And I... What's that? Oh, <laughs> it, it comes out different every time. <laughs> yes. Well, this is my advice. You cannot possibly prevent him from publishing that book. Ah. But he can sue you. He can sue me. He can sue you for assault, defamation of character, and false arrest. Well, pay him off, then. I tried to, but he took one look at those statements. And, and you were stupid enough to let him see them. Fine thing. Who told you to do that? You did. Did you do anything I asked you to? Did yes. you get his address? Yes, I got his address and an invitation for you for... Oh. He'll be available after 9 o'clock tonight at his home, 991 Elton Street, Brooklyn. That's the only place where he'll discuss it, and he'll discuss it only with you. Of course, you're not going. Mm, of course I am. Now, listen, MJ, he struck me as being a very headstrong young man. And after all, you're only... Uh... Well, I'm only the head of this company. After all, what have I to be afraid of? Well, he did say something about wanting your shirt. That would be enough, Marsh. Yes, I imagine it would be for any man. Oh. Maybe I can get my shoes next week. Yeah, maybe. How about some jabber? Mm, I'll get it. I wonder who that is. I'll answer it. Okay. I'd like to see Mr. Michael Holmes. Well, come in. He's on the second floor. Thank you. Would you be good enough to tell him? Go right on up. First door to your left. Uh, 
Nothing. Nothing at all. I think I've been working a little too hard lately. May I have a glass of water, please? Sure. Hey, Sue, bring a glass of water in here, will you? Maybe we ain't had enough sleep. I get feeling that way sometimes, after a long stretch of work. You see, I drive a truck. Here you are. Sue, this is Mike's girlfriend. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I, Mr. Oh, Holmes, that's all right. Mike told us his girlfriend was coming around tonight. Oh. This is my wife, Sue, and I'm Johnny Johnson. How do you do? Likewise. You can guess what we think of Mike. You're lucky. Mike's the kind of a guy that would give you the shirt off his back. <laughs> Shirt? Yeah. Thank you. Did you say the second floor? Yeah. Do you think you can make it? Oh, yes, thank you. Gee, you're pretty. And gee, I'm glad for Mike. You know, I've given up all hope. I've tried to make a match for him, and he turns his nose up at all my friends. Says he doesn't want his kids to look like them. But you know, if they looked like you, they'd now, really be... so don't embarrass her. was the idea of telling those people downstairs I was your girlfriend. Well, would you want me to tell them that you came here on business? Let me take your coat. Might as well be comfortable. Oh, thank you. It's too cold in here. Besides, our business won't take very long. My attorney said if I came here to see you that you'd sign the release. Naturally, I want to apologize for doing you an injustice. Oh, come on. There are certain transactions that shouldn't be rushed. I'd hate to look back on this and be sorry that we settled things too quickly. I'm willing to go with highs. Please, I'm not a businessman. I'm an artist, a writer, a creator of moods. I can't just plunge into things like, like you captains of industry. There. Isn't that better? It's uh, a little warm in here. More air over here. There's only one other view like this, Inspiration Point. That's where everybody goes tonight. Suppose we make a start, Mr. Holmes. That's what I'm doing. Hey. Hey. Come on, take a look. Come on. Very pretty. How about 2,000? Why'd you leave the window so quickly? I said, how about 2,000? 2,001. Two thousand dollars. Ah, money. Yes, money. Listen. You know what that is, Maggie? The name is M.J. Drew, and that's the whistle of a dirty old skull. No. That's the sob of a girl, Maggie. A girl crying for a man who went off to the South Seas and never came back. Because he fell for us or wrong. Is this your business mood? Could be. By my long gray beard, I've got it. I've got why you always have a desk in front of you. Why you have detectives standing outside the door. Why you torture your truck drivers in such delicate little ways. Why you drive your staff around with that hypothetical bullwhip. You're afraid of men. Oh, yes, you are, Maggie. You're afraid of them. And you're determined to make the world an unsafe place for men to live in. Oh, let's stop this nonsense, you... you... Sticks and stones, Maggie. Sticks and stones. That's why you're hiding behind the table. I wasn't aware that I was hiding behind the table. Did you ever go to Inspiration Point, Maggie? Did you ever go naked? When I want to be psychoanalyzed? Answer me, or I promise I'll drag out the family wash when I sue. Did you ever go naked? No. Then I was right. I, I'm afraid of no man. <laughs> Put your right hand on my shoulder. No. The desk between us again, Maggie? How 
up with the left one on the other shoulder. That's it. Now then, put your head on my chest. There, take it easy, baby. Take it easy, it's very simple. Relax. There's nothing to be afraid of. Must have been a wonderful child. Good morning. First call for breakfast. I'm not hungry, thank you. Oh, how could you be so mean as to when I came here in perfectly good faith and. Huh? What? what are you talking about? Well, this is today, isn't it? Mm hmm. I came here yesterday. That's right. And these are your. These are your pajamas, aren't they? Susie! No sugar scarce, but you don't have to kill me to get it. Well, now you look rested. I never did see anybody so tired. You didn't even move when I undressed you. You are the prettiest things. I showed them to Johnny. <laughs> Good morning, Maggie. Mike told us your name was Maggie. Give us a kiss, Sue. Mm, marmalade. Well, I gotta run to do or die for the good old Drew Company. If I'm tardy, I'm gonna explain to Vinegar Puss, otherwise known as the boss of the great Drew trucking lines, that I had a sleep with a friend last night that not only tosses in his sleep, but calls me baby. Why don't you marry that guy, Maggie? Come on, 50 cents now for every five minutes you're late. Well, times are better, you can take off and be Cupid. Oh, wait a minute. Here's the dope on the driver's insurance you asked about. Goodbye, Maggie. So am I. Bye. I suppose you'll have Johnny fired. My clothes, please. I'm due at the office. Are you going to have him fired? You can call later and we'll arrange about the release. Get your own clothes. Well, then leave the room. Well, this happens to be my room. Are you forgetting I'm your guest? No, no. I've already written Emily Post asking her what to do in a situation like this. I'm waiting to hear from her. How, how do you expect me to get dressed if, if you're in the room? You know, really, you surprise me. What is this silly, girlish modesty? I thought you considered yourself a sort of business deity. Just something to keep in trim for the good old stockholders. Come on, get up for the Drew Company. Go ahead and get dressed. You're a machine, not a woman. You've no right to assume any of the feminine graces. <laughs> was here. She left a change of clothes in your office. And uh, also waiting in your office. Hello. Hello. That's what I was trying to tell you. And your mother phoned. She said she was worried because you didn't come home last night. Uh, uh, call her and tell her I'm quite all right, that I spent the night at the Sherry. Uh, uh, 
business engagement. Yes, M.J. Vivian, why are you here? What's happened? Well, we started on our way south, just as you planned, and we got to Baltimore. Oh, Margaret, the strangest thing happened the day we started out. Why are you here? Why did you come back? When Stephen and I got in the car and he said, and now, young lady, not only did my knees shake, but I just trembled all over. Oh, Vivian, for goodness sakes, get to your reason for coming back. Oh, well, we got to Baltimore, and we got up in the morning, and, oh, Margaret, he's so, so meticulous. He's the only person I know who puts the cat back on his toothpaste. All right, all right. Come on, let's take it step by step. Stephen got up in the morning, he brushed his teeth, he put the cat back on the toothpaste, then what happened? Well, Margaret, I don't see why I have to tell you everything about that morning. After all, the reason we came back happened after breakfast. All right, what happened after breakfast? What happened after breakfast? I don't know. You don't know? Well, he just read the old financial page of the newspaper and made some telephone calls. Oh. But... Then he came back because of business. Come on, unzip me. Good old Stephen. He's always on his toes, never lets an opportunity go by. Thank you. This came marked Rush Important. I thought I'd better bring it in. Well, Margaret, who's sending you flowers? A business note. An eccentric from out west. He's very wealthy. He, he always sends violets with his notes. He, his wife's name's Violet, and he thinks that brings him luck. Silly, isn't it? Why, well, I think it's touching. I think it's rubbish. Maggie, don't you ever have any clothes on? Oh. How did you get in here? The door. You better keep it closed if you don't want a burlicue audience in here. Lewis, that'll be all. And close the door. Close the door, I haven't say. Vivian, you'd better run along, too. And leave you the way you are. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my goodness. What's wrong? You know, I have the strangest feeling I've seen you someplace before. I even feel that at some time or another you've kissed me. Well, could be. Nonsense, Vivian. Mr. Holmes never saw you before. Mr. Holmes and I are barely acquainted. We have a business deal on. Yeah, we were just about to settle things last night, and then Maggie went to sleep right in the middle of the discussion. Oh, at the sherry? Of course not. Mr. Holmes doesn't live at the sherry. Here, you run along. Oh, home. Tell Mother I'll be home for dinner. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Did you get my note? No. Well, that's too bad. I thought it might get here ahead of me. By the way, did you fire Johnny yet? Suppose we discuss the price you're placing on the release. The price is nothing. Surprised, huh? Surprise is something that money and influence can't buy. Well, that's just why I'm giving it to you. I want you to know that. I particularly want you to know it when you go down to fire Johnny. Let me have it. Oh, I'll admit there are a lot of wonderful things you can buy with money. And the ones you can't are pretty insignificant. Things like friendship, kindness, laughter, new set of tires. Oh, Maggie, before I sign this, there's something I wish you'd promise me. Yes. There's isn't much. Yes. If I can borrow the money, will you have dinner with me tonight? Oh, of course. Good. And tomorrow night? Why, of course, I haven't a thing to do. Well, we'll say 8 o'clock then at your house. We won't dress. Oh, I just remembered I have a very important engagement tonight. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I thought. Board of Directors meeting at your house. Tomorrow night, Drew Bank trustees meeting. 
I suppose in business circles, that's what you call shrewd trading. If you feel cheated, Mr. Holmes, you may drop by the cashiers. Hoover, a Mr. Holmes will drop by. Give him $1,000 and charge it to my personal account. We'll find Hoover at the end of the hall. Now, Mr. Holmes, I'm a very busy woman. You better take a look at that signature on the release. See him, MJ? No, we'll discuss him later. Yes, MJ. Fire him! Yes, MJ. Crane, rescind that order. He's not to be fired. Yes, MJ. She rescinded an order. She rescinded an order. I want to see Mr. Holmes. Why did you whistle? Did I whistle? Yes, you went like this. Or maybe it's a dress. You sure look elegant, But I don't know if it's safe to wear to the dance. To the dance? Sure. That's where Mike is. Why, he was supposed to take me to dinner. Everything's all crossed up. Mike goes ahead without you. Susie goes ahead without me. Susie drops me a note. Just because I'm a little late. You tell him I was here. Oh, wait a minute. None of that. You can go with me, and I'll try to remember Mike is my best friend. Here, lend the hand. No riding in subways for my gals, Maggie. Nothing but the best. We travel in style. Get a truck. Sure, a crown of oh, No, I don't think I'd better. Come on, it's raining. Positively no riders. Won't this get you into trouble? No, no spotters out on a night like this. Hello? Look, a spotter. Hello, Johnny. Didn't know you were on tonight. Special trip. I didn't know you went to work all dressed up like that. Well, I'd like to be neat. Uh, you uh, wouldn't be going to the employee's dance in a company truck, would you, Johnny? Uh-uh. Well, that's good. I'd like you to obey all the rules. Now, if that dame will get up off the floor of your cab, you can get going. Do you blame me? No, I'd do the same myself. Thanks. <laughs> but rules are rules. Come on, sister, this is the end of the line. But it's raining. Take that up with the weatherman. Sorry, sister. This cab is taken. Bring your dog catches neck, will you? Well, well, well. The employees of the M.J. Drew Company are highly honored. They don't know who I am, and I don't want them to. I came here because of you. Oh, darling. Why don't you do something about that glandular condition of yours? Uh -huh. I came here to have dinner with you. That was the deal. Dinner for the release. I thought when I saw the dress that maybe you'd left the desk in the office. Here you are, folks. The bicarbonate of soda will be served on the way out. No, thank you. I don't care for any. Oh, you gotta eat it. It's paid for. That's just good economics. Come on, Susie. Let's cut up the parquet, strip by strip. 
I hope this doesn't go away with the same impression of you that I have. I don't care for frankfurters. Uh, hey, hey, don't call it that. It'll rear right up and bite you. That's a hot dog. Did you ever eat them? Of course I have. And you don't like them? Oh, come on. Everybody likes hot dogs, even the Queen of England. But she takes time off in the business of being a queen to be a woman. Give me that hot dog. <laughs> Beard. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to commence the dance contest. Now, these are the rules. No one is to dance with his own girl or wife. On account of he can practice at home, and that ain't fair. So you gotta grab yourself another partner. When I tap you on the shoulders, get off the floor. The judges are myself. <laughs> Callahan, the South Round Driver. Hiya, folks. And Mr. Crane from the personnel. Grab your partners and may the best set of gans win. Come on, I've got to get out of here. Good night. Well, aren't you going to buy me dinner? Sure. Two more hot dogs. Really? Me for you, Maggie. I'll kill somebody. We'd better get him off the floor. Hey, wait a minute, boys. This is class dancing. That's why we don't understand. Look at that rhythm. Look at that flow of motion. Why, it's, it's poetry. Poetry. It might be poetry, but it ain't dancing. Smile, Maggie. They're watching us. <laughs> But can she take it? Hang on to your bustle, Maggie. It's the last lap. I've seen that before, but never on any dance floor. Oh, you must listen to me. You don't know what's at stake if we don't pick the right couple. I do. Oh, okay. But next year, don't you ask me to be any judge. Come on, Sam. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner! Better oh. oh. give some to Mike. He looks a little green. I bet you saw yourself a widower before you were even a husband. All she had was a little colic. Yeah. You should have held her over your shoulder and patted her on her back after feeding her. That's what brings up the air. <laughs> I don't believe it. You can smile. Hey, Johnny, give her another swig. You don't know what an occasion this is. <laughs> Why, there'll be people dancing in the streets tonight. Stranger kissing strangers. The beginning of a new era. Mm, come on, give me another one of those. I missed the can of floor wax when Pop was making this. I wonder if we put it in here. Johnny, you're a wonderful host and a charming fellow, isn't he, Mike? Uh-huh. I tell you what, tomorrow I'll see that you get a $5 raise. <laughs> Did I say $5? Oh, you're much too charming for five. We'll make that 10 Oh, <laughs> Maggie, that's great. And just to show you my appreciation, I'm going to buy the Brooklyn Bridge and have it stretched from Mike's house to yours. So that when you want to see each other, you won't have to buck all that traffic. Oh, how sweet. Mike, will you write me a pretty speech of acceptance? Mm -hmm. Oh. No. Uh oh. Oh, oh, oh. The expression is, oh, brother. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. When they deliver the Brooklyn Bridge tomorrow, will you please see that they don't wake me up? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, by the way, is your chauffeur available? He's off tonight. 
But I would be delighted to drive you myself. That's just charming of you, old boy. So nice. It's been a charming evening, Charlie. You come again, old boy. Thank you so much. I do hope this isn't putting you to too much trouble, old boy. Well, it is. Well, what can I do about it? Not a thing. Get going. You must have been a beautiful baby. You must have been. Susie, not so loud. You want to wake the neighbors? Do you want them to know my wife is a lush? Come on. Oh, I must have been a beautiful baby. I must have been a... What's the second line, Mike? You must have been a wonderful child. I must have been a wonderful child. When you were... I was too, you know that? Why, well, pictures didn't prove it to you, if you don't believe me. I had dimples all over me. Well, of course, I can't show you those. You're still a beautiful baby. You're a doll. What did you call me? Beautiful baby doll. Oh, oh, say it again. You're a beautiful doll baby. Oh, yeah. Honey, honey, did you hear what he called me? Huh? Did you hear what he called me? Oh. Can't tell you what to call it. A beautiful baby doll. Oh. oh. I didn't think anybody would ever call me that. You know, I think I'm gonna cry. What do you want? Where are your manners? Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody just called me a beautiful doll. I suppose you don't believe it. Go on, Mike. Go on, show it. She's a beautiful doll. There. Oh, Mike, I'll never forget you for this. Mm, I'll never forget you, baby. I tell you what, let's none of us forget each other. Don't you think that's a good idea? A wonderful idea. Yeah, I... Oh, I suppose it isn't. Wonderful. Oh, he's really a wonderful... You're a wonderful watchman. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Good night, Susie. Good night, Johnny. Good night. Say good night to Maggie. Good night. You go back to sleep now. Hey, Mike. How long are you gonna be? What is this joint? What do you say? This is the Drew Estate. What was that? That was Miss Drew. Who? M.J. Drew of the Drew Trucking Line. Uh, oh. <sighs> you know something? This is my favorite room. <laughs> oh, I feel so... Good, Mike. My knees are shaky and my head's dizzy, but you know I don't feel weak. Oh, I feel strong and warm. Oh, so warm. Shall I open the door? No, the door is too far away. Oh, darling, don't ever go that far away from me, will you? Mm. Look, there's no desk between us. There's no desk, no detective, oh, no nothing. You better go to bed, Margaret. The name is Maggie. It's been a full day, Maggie. The name is Baby. No, please go to bed, Baby, please. Oh, my God, I can't just plunge into sleep. I'm a creature of moods. be the first to dance with me. Mm? Mm hmm? You know, I've never really danced before. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, well, I moved around the room with the man because it was expected of me. Sure. Tonight, I want to dance. No, we've danced enough this evening. Look, baby, I've had a tough day. I'm gonna get some sleep. 
Do you know what's the matter with you? I'm sleepy. Do you know why you've always got a typewriter in front of you? Because you're scared. You're scared somebody will find out what a Puritan you are. That's why you're always attacking conventionality and everything. You're uh, prissy. That's what you are. You're prissy, Mike. Prissy, Mike. Oh, oh those years without you, Mike. Those awful, awful years. Oh, my. It's 10.30. Just as I told you, she phoned. She's on her way in. Will you tell MJ I'd like to see her? She's not in yet, Mr. Crane. First prize awarded Margaret Johanna Drew for jitter jitterbugging. Jitterbugging? The only time MJ ever jitterbugged was when someone gave her a hot foot at a slumming party. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Crane, notify all departments to practice up. I'd like a little stiffer competition next year. Yes, MJ. Oh, uh, by the way, I won't be able to see any of you gentlemen. I'm much too busy. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What, the jitterbugging? No, the hat. Did it come with the cup? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, there's, a, there's a board here that squeaks every time you step on it. It's very disconcerting. Very. You sent for me, MJ? Uh, oh, 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 yes. Come in. We have a driver working for us by the name of Johnny Johnson. I want you to give He's him... He's already a... been fired. Twelve others were fired with him. They all used their trucks last night. Who gave you the authority to fire those men? Well, it's the rules. First time a fine, second time dismissal. Oh, I will not tolerate this, this abuse of authority. You'll rehire every one of those men and give them each a five dollar raise for their inconvenience. Yes, MJ. Since you're in the firing mood, you can fire one of our spotters. Which one? I don't know his name, but he's got squinty eyes and hawk nose. In mouth? Yes, that's he. Why, he's been with us for years. I don't care. He's a sneak. Well, that's what he's supposed to be. When I want a sneak, I'll get the best of Good morning, sir. I brought your breakfast. Listen, tell me the worst. How did I get... I, I put you to bed last night, sir. And what happened to Miss Drew? Oh, she took one of the guest bedrooms, sir. Well, where'd you dig up the sleeping bag? My pajamas are a bit small, sir, so I, I borrowed that thing from the cook. She must belong to the parachute battalion. <laughs> By the way, sir, there's a, there's a gentleman downstairs for you, sir. His name is Johnny Johnson. Johnny here? Send him up. Yes, sir. I am up. You don't have to send for me. Hi, Johnny. So listen, that stuff your old man made can put a guy in some pretty embarrassing positions. <laughs> Very embarrassing. Come on in, I'll give you some coffee. You know, in that phony book you're supposed to be writing. Phony book? You're using it to weasel your way in with us. Getting us to talk. Then ringing a big boss in on us. Oh, wait a minute. Who, who's got the hangover, you or me? I'm talking about the guys you were supposed to write about, to let people know about. The little guys, the USA. The guys you ate with, drank with, and laughed with last night. The guys you sold out this morning. The guys with the cans tied to their tails. Cans tied to... You mean you guys were fired this morning? What did you get for it? Outside of a few personal favors, Miss Drew seems to be tossing you away. Oh, word. shut up, John. Shut up! Wasn't it you said we little guys were too quiet? That we should raise our voices to be heard? Well, I'm raising my voice. I got a pretty low opinion of a stool pigeon, but a guy that sells out his friends for a skirt. Do 
You better stay right here where you belong. Don't come down to us little guys again. Because if you do, we'll tear you apart and feed you to the lions. Come on in. It's not my house. I'm Mrs. Drew, Margaret's mother. Well? Really, I am. I know I don't look it, but I am. Aren't I, Stephen? I can vouch for it. Mr. Holmes, you've got a lot of money, haven't you? Oh, huh? Mother, please. Oh, but he has. Margaret told Vivian, and Vivian told me and you. And there's no use trying to borrow money from a man who hasn't got any money. Mr. Holmes, how would you like to make 8% on $30,000 for six months? I'd love it. Then you'll let me have the money. Come on, cut it out. What would a guy with two million want with a loan of a measly 30000 I haven't got a nickel. You haven't got a nickel? He hasn't got any... No. Oh! So you're one of those Park Avenue pirates. Oh. You married Vivian under false pretenses, you little chiseler. Didn't it ever occur to you that I love Vivian? So what? You're not a success, are you? You know what MJ does with guys like you? She presses a little buzzer, out pop a couple of stooges, and you pop in jail, I know. Oh, yes, but you won't tell. You look like a gentleman, even if you do have your coat off. You will lend him the 30000 won't you? You will lend him the money, won't you? Won't you? Why don't you lend it to him yourself? Well, you see, I get $50 a week spending money. Margaret says I don't know the value of money. Of course I do. My dad left a steel mill and debts. I've cleared the estate of debts. I still own the mill. With this new defense program, I can get government contracts, but I must put up 10% of my bids in cash. Where's my hat? Oh, Mr. Holmes, if Stephen should fail, I know he won't. But if he should, I'll pay you back $50 a week. Oh. If you do open this steel mill, you'll employ truck drivers, won't you? Yes, but you can't employ men in a closed mill. You got a blank check handy? Oh, we've got oodles of checks in the library. Any particular bank? No, it doesn't make any difference. Any bank. Oh, Stephen, isn't he wonderful? He's got money in every bank. Oh, you are a darling. <laughs> oh, do forgive me. Margaret says I have no control. Well, you're very sweet. Are you sure when Margaret was born, they didn't make a mistake at the hospital and give you the wrong brat? Oh, oh no, that's not possible. Stephen, do you think they could have? Oh, I wonder. You must have been a beautiful baby. You must have been a wonderful child. Yes? The heads of departments are waiting in the conference room. Thank you. Louis, you're knitting again. Well, it's just a habit. It really takes no time. It, it... Bring it in. Yes, MJ. Is it done? This? Mm-hmm. Well, it's really very simple. Here, try it. Oh, no. I'm afraid I'd spoil it. Oh, no, you wouldn't spoil it. You would like to try it, wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. I would, really. Oh. Here. Now, you put your hand here and the other hand over here. That's it. Mm hmm And take this yarn, like that. MJ, the heads of the department's all ready for you. Yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. I'm busy. Obviously. You're married, aren't you? Yes, MJ. Three years. You can say that's all you do and it comes out of sweat, huh? <laughs> well, not exactly. You... What's it like? Hmm? What's being married like? Well, I never stop to think about it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, after a while, you even stop feeling there was a time when you weren't married. Don't you ever get bored? Yes. And how, yes. Some mornings I come in here very grateful for my job. But then around five o'clock. Oh, I don't watch the clock, but you, you know it's five o'clock because you start feeling as if there was something missing. You, you get lonely. I guess that's what it is. Lonesomeness. And you start counting the minutes till you meet them where you always do, in front of the subway entrance. Don't you get dizzy and don't your knees shake? The first year, you're on a perpetual St. Vitus dance. Only for a year? Mm -hmm. The light's just right on his hair sometimes, or the soft music. You do a little shaking. Well, then, 
Then old Mary really becomes as a habit. Oh, beautiful habit. Often a terrifying habit. Sometimes you wake up in the night and you lie there listening to him breathe and it's dark. So dark, it doesn't seem as though the morning's going to come. And you lie there and you say, Dear God, take me first. Promise you'll take me first. Hello, Mike. That'll be all there was. Thank you for last night. I'll never forget it. Neither will a lot of other people. What's the matter? You're white. Hmm. Isn't that the usual color of the Caucasian race? What's that? The release. Sign, and with my own name this time. Oh, but you know that isn't necessary. And you better read it first. In consideration of the sum of 30,000... $30,000? I don't understand. That's very clear. 30000 A three with four zeros after it. You know, money. The stuff they print in Washington and sing in the ground at Fort Knox. You must be joking. Come on, come on. Make out a little check and I'll be on my way and out of yours. There must be thousands of tons of stuff just waiting to be transported from one place to another in Drew trucks. I don't want you to waste any time on me. Where'd you say I'd find the cashier? Yes. Lewis, show Mr. Holmes to the cashiers. See that he gets a check for 30000 Gentlemen, meeting's called to order. Gentlemen, this meeting is called to discuss the refrigerator trucks. This is a model of one of them. These trucks are divided into compartments, and each compartment... E each, uh, Each compartment... Okay, can have its own degree of temperature. So that... So that each staple can... have the degree of temperature best suited to it. We can transport in one truck... Milk, butter, fruit, flowers and beautiful babies. Transport babies in a refrigerator truck? What a perfectly stupid suggestion, Marsh. Babies in a refrigerator truck. That's what you just said. Excuse me, gentlemen, I'll be right back. on the Holmes matter. File it and charge it to my account. $30,000? Yes. Gentlemen, I don't think there's a truck company or a railroad equipped to carry various products in one car. Our research department experimented for three years before we built these trucks. They're foolproof. In all the time we've been using them, not one ounce of produce has gone bad. No competitor in the field can meet that record. We were first in the field. And yet I got nowhere. I got absolutely nowhere. Marsh, will you stop interrupting me? What? Who said anything? I didn't even hear you. My mind was a thousand miles away. Why? Are we boring you? Would you prefer floor shows with these meetings? What am I getting into? I didn't speak a word. I didn't even think one. Yet you jump on me. What's the matter with you, MJ? What? The meetings adjourned. Doctor Cassell, I 
hear, I hear music and sounds. I, I see things. How old are you, MJ? Well, I'm old enough. Mm. Ever been in love? No. Ever been out with men? Of course I have. I work with them, don't I? Uh, maybe that's your trouble. Oh, poo. Oh, better women than you have tried to poo poo it. I ought to create a love lorn department for you. Look here, Margaret. I'm an old duffer and don't know much. But I was there when you were born. I know you better than any man alive. You're a young, healthy woman and ready for love. And the first presentable man that comes along... Yeah, I know lots of presentable men. Oh, no, no. He will have to dominate you. Oh, now you're becoming modern, Dr. Cassell. Of course I'm not. Your symptoms are classic. Hearing music, sounds, seeing things. Why, a high school student in elementary biology could diagnose your case. That's nonsense. And I'll prove it to you. <laughs> Good evening, Nolan. Good evening, Miss Margaret. The board of directors is waiting in the library. Thank you, Nolan. Margaret, may I speak to you? Yes, Mother. Marsh, will you call the meeting to order? Yes. That nice, rich young man from out west you're merging with. He's not nice, he's not rich, and there's no merger. There's nothing but a stupid situation that Vivian got us into, which incidentally cost us $30,000 in blackmail. $30,000? Oh. Uh, Mother dear, please, we're busy. Good night. I will not cover a losing proposition with other profits. I don't believe... Mother dear, this is a board meeting. I know, dear. Yes, we're talking business. Of course. Then I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave. You can't. Mother, what's the matter with you? I'm a stockholder, a big stockholder. Oh, I know you're trustee for the estate, Margaret, and I can't sell any of the stock, but I can vote it. I can sit in here and find out just how my business is being run. <sighs> Well, I've been able to run the business to everybody's satisfaction up till now. I don't know how capable you are, Margaret. After all, a woman who loves a man and can't track Mother, him. now about that Drewville line. In order to keep things straight, I and think... Wait a more, he's not a blackmailer. I happen to know. Mother, I can't prevent you as a stockholder from being here. But I can certainly insist that you confine yourself to the business of the day. Margaret, you can't hide Gentlemen, behind the Drew trust. This franchise will cost I know least, I'm silly uh, and stupid. But I know when a woman's heart is broken. This is Michael. I will not have his name mentioned in this house. It's being mentioned every time your heart beats. Can't you hear it, Margaret? It's saying, Mike, 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 Mike. Isn't it? I've waited a long time for you to become a woman. I knew when you did, you'd be terribly hurt. But I'm glad, glad it's over a man like Michael Holmes. I remember when you said to Vivian, marriage is just like any other step, not for better or worse, but for better and better. Now you're in love with a pauper and a rogue, and you can't get him, not for better or worse. And what's more, the money went to Stephen. What? To open his mill, providing Stephen would employ the men you discharged, Michael's friends, you see, your sister's husband hasn't a dime. But how do you know all this? I was the go-between. But didn't he know that I had reinstated the men? Didn't he know they were discharged against my wishes? Didn't he know I was giving Johnny a raise? Didn't he? Go ask him, dear. Mother, what if he won't answer? You're a woman now, and a woman gets an answer if she sets her mind to it. said you were silly and stupid. You're as wise as the age. I'm the dope. I always agree with the president of the firm. Please wait for me. Well, look who's here. Hey, boys, look who's here. Yeah. Well, so am, fellas, make a pretty curtsy. I must see Michael. So nice of you to come to our little party. We're celebrating new jobs. Ruff, ruff, ruff! Steve Pangale! Steve Pangale! Please get out of my way. Why get out of your way? Walk right over us. You've been doing it for years, but no more. We got new jobs. We can hold our heads up. Sure. Hold your head up, Lug. I know I'm on the other side of the fence. But is love an emotion that's reserved only for the proletariat? Look, I love Mike Holmes. And all your ideas on class distinction aren't going to keep me. Now get out of my way. I thought 
thought you'd come here. Marsh, clear the way for me. It's going to take a little time. Are you a man or aren't you? Well, my birth certificate says male. I hope I won't have reason to regret it. Perhaps you'd better try calling him. Hmm? Mike! Mike Holmes! He yeah, doesn't answer. You're putting me in a very undignified position. Prepare to defend yourself. Cynthia, I must see Michael. I must tell him that it was all a mix-up at the office and that I did not discharge these men. Michael isn't here. That's what I've been trying to tell her. Shut up, you hooligan. But where is he? I don't know. But Johnny does. Please, Johnny. You tell her or I'll cut your allowance down to 25 cents a day. Okay. One of the boys was supposed to pick him up. <laughs> ah, way is clear, my dear. You lily lover. Please, please, I'm emotionally exhausted. You want the lift? Not without an explanation. The dame bought out Steve Pattengill. You know she's got all the money in the world? Well, the secretary of the treasury's on the job. He'll take care of her. She'll be taken care of, all right. Hop in. Okay, buddy. This time I saw it with my own eyes. So what, bud? The passenger, bud, the passenger. All right, Chisler. Crawl out before I drag you out and boot you from here to the sheriff's office. Oh, for goodness sakes, Mahoney, must you always do your snooping at the most inopportune moment? Johnny, stop at the first minister's house. Yes, ma'am. Cupid Johnny, that's me. All I need is a bow, an arrow, and a diaper. You can report back to the office, Flatfoot, and tell them I won't be available for two weeks. <whistles> Make that four weeks! Make that indefinitely!